Okay, everyone, let's go ahead and do another central limit theorem guide question, uh, and this time with respect to uh, categorical data. Okay, so it says that Jocelyn has decided that she is interested in entering into a cooking competition. She knows that the true proportion of people doing these competitions that have more experience than she does is 39%. At this competition, 184 people have registered to compete. Okay, so we're basically categorizing people, and this, cate this categorization is basically a success and a failure. And we handled this very similarly when we were doing the binomial distribution. And what we did is we took that, the binomial um, values, or the, um, the successes and failures, and we turned them into discrete random variables, and we handled it that way. Well, if our sample is big enough, we actually can model this with the normal distribution as well. And the central limit theorem says that when we're dealing with categorical data, as long as the sample size and the, and the proportions um, of successes and proportion of failures, as long as they both are greater than or equal to 15, we're good. So let's check. We've got our sample size of n equals 184. And we've got the true proportion who have more experience than she does is equal to pi. And that equals 0.39. Okay, so the first thing that we want to see is n times pi. And that equals to roughly 71. And we've got n times 1 minus pi, or the number of failures, and that's equal to 112. So we've got enough in both sides so that we can actually use this for our normal distribution. So pi is going to be our true kind of mean, but now it's like our true proportion. And we need also now a sigma pi. And in order to get this, we take the square root of pi times uh, 1 minus pi, and we divide that by n. And the nice thing of how I did this is I typed in these variables, like this is just the equation, and since I have declared my variables up here, it will calculate this for me. And so if I ask for it to give me sig pi, it gives me that the standard deviation is basically like, uh, you know, 3.6%. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's go and look at our question. So the first question, what's the probability that more than 70 participants have more experience than she does? Okay, it gives us this number of participants uh, and we need to figure out what the critical probability is, which is going to be 70 uh, divided by n. And that gives us as 38%. Okay, so now with those pieces, we can actually go in and look at our normal distribution. And let's graph this thing before we do anything. So our mean now is going to be 0.39 or pi. And the standard deviation is, I'm going to just copy this guy so I don't make a transcription error, is going to be that. Okay, and we're going to delete out this shading in of the areas, uh, except we want this actually, we'll do greater than this critical point. And I'll just put it up to 1, and we'll click OK. And we see that here is our normal distribution. This is really cool. It says that the true mean is like right here at 0.39, and we have what's this area? Okay, well, we can figure this out now. We know it's going to be about over 50% because we're a little bit to the left of the mean uh, of the true proportion, and we're looking at bigger. And what we can do is let's go look at our probabilities. And for our probabilities, we're going to take this guy as our critical point. We'll do 0.39 as our mean, and then we got to grab our standard deviation. And we do indeed want the upper tail because as we saw, it is moving to the up, the upper end of the graph or to the right. Okay, and then we can just go ahead and click OK. There we go. And we've got a little over 
that more than 70 participants have more experience than she does. Great. Next question. The competition at this cook-off was re is, uh, this cook-off actually is really stiff. In fact, it falls into the top 11% where the other contestants are more experienced than Jocelyn. How many people are more experienced than her? And it says to round up. Okay, so now we're given a critical, or a the percent on the upper end of the curve, and now we need to just figure out how many people is that. Okay, so it takes a couple of steps so we can do it. So let's first of all go to look at our quantiles, and we're going to have this be 0.11, or the top 11%. Our mean, once again, was 0.39, and our standard deviation was, oops, sorry, this Point though, I don't think that's the right standard deviation. Let's grab the right one. Yeah, let's grab this guy for a standard deviation. It's good to check your numbers to make sure as you're going along. Okay, and we do want that upper tail because it's in this top 11% of where contestants are more experienced than she is. And we can click OK. And it says that 40, this is saying that 43% have more experience than she does. But that's not what the question asks. The question asks is how many people. So what we need to do is to take n and multiply it by the percent of people who are uh, who have more experience than she does. Well, it is not wanting me to copy this. Let's see if I can't copy it now. I guess not. Here we go. Let's try this again. Copy. Nope. I'll just type it out. 0 0.4341028. Okay. And if I hit enter, it says that 79, and I need to round up. And so in the top 11%, it would be, in fact, 80 people are more experienced than she. Okay. Final question. It says, Jocelyn actually performs her best in competitions where only 35 to 43% are better than her. What is the likelihood that this occurs? All right, so we need to figure out, if we bring up this graph again, the area between 35 and 43. And we can do that pretty easily. Let's just go grab this from our probabilities. And we can have this be from 0.43 and 0.35, we've got those still. Let's go ahead and do lower tail. I'll click OK, and I'm going to subtract those two from one another. And I get there's about a 73% chance that only between 35 to 43% are actually better than her. All right, so let's just take a moment, and we'll see how we act. And we nailed our responses. So this is how we can use our central limit theorem when we are dealing with categorical data and when we kind of term it in just successes and failures. Anyhow, good luck on your guide. And, uh, and hopefully this kind of clears up the application of the central limit theorem with respect to uh, proportions.